Okay. I've got no time in this world for anything. Um, I'm either answering comments or emails or I'm working on my book or I'm making some videos or, God forbid, talking on long phone calls, uh, which I absolutely don't like. I think the phone is like pure evil. I can't stand talking on the phone very long. It absolutely upsets the hell out of me. Um, what the conjugate nature of the universe? What if it were the case, and it's not what if, it's absolutely 100% true, that people like uh, Tesla, Faraday, Steinmetz, Oliver Heavy, so these are the people that gave you 100% of the electrical grid, okay? Einstein didn't give you jack. He didn't give you anything. What if it were the case that everything that you think you understand about the universe were not complicated, or is not a bag of magical particles, as a quantum, this is see, this is Mother Nature according to uh, general relativity and quantum mechanics. Virtual particles with which there is zero evidence for warp space insanity. Tesla said this was harebrained quackery. You know, space has absolutely no properties. It's a posterior attribute. It is relational. Okay, it's like talking about a shadow. It's like, well, you sit in a shadow, you get cold. Therefore, a shadow is something. No, it's a posterior attribute. A shadow is not a subject. It is an attribute. Space has no properties. Space is an attribute of the lack of inertia. It is a posterior attribute of the loss of inertia from magnetic divergence. Space has... This is exactly what Tesla said. He didn't say anything further than this. He said space had no properties. He didn't say what I've said prior to that or in addition to that. And that is the case. Negative momentum particles to explain gravity? I mean, are you kidding me? Uh, oh, yeah, unquantified multiverse, you know, time-traveling force particles? Gravitons, quarks, gluon, you know, Mother Nature is a, a cross-eyed hooker on crack that has a calculator. You know, this, this is the, the picture. You know, you go to the bookstore, and I've got all of these books. Most of them are PDF, of course. You know, and you look at these people, they're, they're just, they're bat crap insane. They are literally insane. Um... It is Nikola Tesla, I forget his exact phrase, he said, uh, there are a lot of people, he said, you can think very deeply and yet think insanely. So there are a lot of deep thinkers, but they're incredibly, the actual, you know, insane asylums are full of deep thinkers. I mean, these are people that can, like, you know, beat you at chess, you know, while they're blindfolded and in one hand tied behind their back while they're watching TV. You know, they'll be sitting here playing chess and watching Tom and Jerry cartoons. But they're in a padded room inside of an insane asylum. And these are the same idiots that, that make up a general relativity and quantum mechanics. You know, big bangs and black holes, space, which is neither a force nor a field, acts on things. You know, this is Mother Nature according to general relativity and quantum mechanics. Hold on a second, I'll get to the, the point here. Here is how the Greeks understood it, and here's how the ancient Indians understood it, and here's how Nikola Tesla saw it, too, and this is how it really is. Mother Nature is really simple. She's like a barefoot, uh, barefooted, uh, hairy armpit, naked chick, you know, uh, wearing a, uh, you know, a hemp tunic, you know, wandering through the forest. She doesn't have a calculator. Everything is so simple. Inertia and acceleration, force and motion explains the entire cosmic mechanics as well as the conjugate nature of the universe, space and counter space, charge and discharge, centrifugal, centripetal, di divergence. You know that there's absolutely zero evidence in this world for an electron. The notion of electron particle is an absurdity. The people that said that electron did not even the discoverer, so to say, of the electron uh, denied for a very long time that there was such a thing as an electron particle. Nikola Tesla denied vehemently that there was such a thing as an electron. The notion of a charge, if you think that there is something running outside down the power lines, down the street, wherever you live at, there are actually particles running through those wires and you are smoking crack. I mean, have any of these idiots ever heard of wireless power induction? I mean, there are like a half a dozen patents recently that came out for wireless power induction so you could charge your iPad and your iPhone within your room and it will transmit uh, like one watt. It's actually 950 milliwatts. It's just under a watt of power. You know, this is, it will transmit the same thing as far as charging a power wirelessly even in a complete vacuum. Power has nothing to do with particles. This is a damn fact. Even the idiots at NASA have said that given a large enough array, we could actually beam power out to the space station. However, the, uh, the loss would be extreme, and it would have to be using massive Yagi arrays. But power transmission has nothing to do with particles. So this is Mother Nature and simplicity. Let's uh, take a look at something I discovered that explained the, you know, the nature of magnetism. And this is a, a diagram 
but it's never been fully explained until me and my book and I've got like 150 pages of notes I'm working on the fourth edition of uncovering the missing secrets but this is the if you're to go anywhere in the universe and show this to an alien I'm not talking about aliens for God's sakes you show this to another race of, hu of uh, beings somewhere they would immediately understand this if they were halfway advanced this is the conjugate diagram of the entire universe the entire universe is this diagram let's take a look at what this is this is an actual uh, picture of iron filings over uh, uh, alternating current passing through a wire in other words if you actually go down the street cut the wires in half and take a look at the field it would look like this you see the circular reciprocations along the radial wires going down the lines and if you actually put a diagram over top of this, this is the exact same reciprocating processional hyperboloid that you see that defines a bar magnet the bar magnet would be outlined in red the line of inertia which would be the green line right here circular radial spatial Force in motion, inertia, and acceleration. This is the conjugate nature of the universe. And if you were to take that cross-section in its totality and apply the hyperboloid and the Lamour frequency of geomagnetic precession, which, by the way, is a constant of phi, i.e. the golden ratio, and it occurs at a rate, which is my discovery in my equation, it occurs at a rate of a 1 over phi to the power of negative 3, which, by the way, my discovery is tattooed right here on my wrist. The biggest discovery I will ever make is tattooed right here on my wrist. This is what you see, gi basically a gigantic donut. This is the cross-section of that donut, if you will. You are seeing lines of phi times psi. Phi times psi, by the way, is Q and Planck of electrification. You have dielectricity, and you have divergent, reciprocating lines of magnetic force. Force in motion, inertia, and acceleration. Mother Nature is that simple. Absolutely every premise within nature is this simplex reciprocating processional hyperbole. Now you are looking at the positive image, the spatial image of the loss of inertia, which forms a torus. Okay? Now if you take a look at this on its side, what you will see is this. And also what you will see is the diagram of everything. Everything is fields and fields are not particles. Okay? It doesn't matter if it's dielectricity, electricity, so-called gravity and magnetism. You are taking a look at the cross-section of the donut here. You are seeing the reciprocating processional hyperboloid. Okay, now we know what the torus is. A torus is a donut. Okay, what is the negative image of that donut? This is where people don't understand counter space. If you take the negative image, it's like the negative image of a shot, a piece of film, if you will, you will see within that an hourglass shape which forms the hyperboloid. The hyperboloid is the counter spatial sink, the vortex that defines in correlationship with the divergent force in motion. Here we go, this is a hyperboloid shape. I superimpose it over top of a real hourglass. This is the negative image of the torus you see right here. We see this, this, uh, this uh, donut or the torus, and the inverse image of that is the hyperboloid, which reciprocates. It's called the Lamour frequency. This frequency actually uh, occurs at a rate of uh, the mean rate of 49.6 uh, megahertz. Uh, this frequency actually has to be known and be adjusted for magnetic resonance imaging machines that actually work. But here we have the plane of inertia and here we have the plane of spatial divergence where space is actually created. Space is a posterior attribute. Space is nothing. It's a posterior relational attribute. By the way, I made another discovery and it would take a long time to discuss. I mean, my book is, is going to be huge. I mean, and I have to go to uh, six different editions to actually define the book. Here we're actually seeing current drawn uh, through a solenoid, and we're seeing the magnetic filings uh, cross-section. Here we're actually seeing the donut or the torus, and right here we're seeing the plane of inertia. And if you actually superimpose this over top, the black box, which would define a magnet over top of that, you get the exact same uh, field diagram of the conjugate nature of force and motion, inertia and acceleration, space and counter space that defines the magnet. See what defines magnet, what defines polarity is so simple that it would stun people. You can read something, like read my book, which is free by the way, and you can hear something, but to truly, that's, a, that's episteme, that's empirical knowledge, that is not true noesis, that is not comprehension. Someone could read it and say, aha, but until you have a direct noetic insight into what the implication is, the conjugate nature of force and motion, inertia and acceleration, you won't have that true internal aha moment to realize how unbelievably simple cosmic mechanics are. I mean, it is the most simplex conjugate relationship imaginable. And uh, the simplest way to explain how it could be any other way is it can't even exist any other way. It can't even exist any other way. It's impossible. 
Um, I lost my point on my uh, mouse cursor there. Sorry about that. That which we call uh, magnetic attraction and magnetic repulsion doesn't even exist. There is a dielectric acceleration and uh, dielectric voidance. Voidance, force in motion, inertia and acceleration. Dielectric countervoidance and divergent pressure. Okay, people don't even know what the definition of polarity is. What is the definition of polarity? Well, a magnet has two poles. It's got a north pole and a south pole. Well, uh, no, it doesn't. A magnet does not have a north pole or a south pole. The simplest way to understand uh, polarity is this. The top line is how a human being draws a line. Okay, here to here. This is how Mother Nature draws a line. Start at the center, move outwards. Polarity, this is a point of inertia. This is how we draw a line. This is how Mother Nature draws a line. Understanding what polarity really is and understanding what magnetism is and uh, the true denotative uh, explanation of magnetism is the full elaboration of the conjugate nature of dielectricity and magnetism, which defines the, uh, defines the point of inertia, the plane of inertia, the loss of that inertia, which denotates magnetism, and the two hybrid modalities of that conjugate relationship between dielectricity and magnetism, which denotes electricity, pi times psi equals Q and Planck of electrification, which defines electricity, and which defines that which we call gravity. See, that which and we call magnetic acceleration is nothing other than a coherent form of gravity. Okay? The same definition that denotes a light from a laser. What's the difference between light and a laser? Well, one is incredibly intense. Well, five watts of a light bulb is barely good enough to read by. Five watts from a laser will burn a hole in your butt. We're talking about coherent acceleration. This is how Mother Nature draws a line. I said, Mother Nature is a hairy armpit tofu-eating chick. It's uh, barefoot in the woods, you know, wearing a... Uh, a hemp tunic. She does not have a calculator. She does not have a bag of magic particles. The universe is not the bull crap that you would uh, be uh, brainwashed to believe from quantum mechanics. This is the this is the diagram of the entire universe. This is it right here. The conjugate nature between dielectricity and magnetism. Force in motion and inertia and acceleration. This is the same diagram you see if you're to see the cross section of a field of a power lines going down the street. This is the same cross section you would see if you were to actually diagram a magnet cut in half. This is the exact same diagram you would see from any point of loss of inertia which defines either electricity, gravity, magnetism, or dielectricity. It is a simplex conjugate relationship. There is only one field. That field is inertia. The loss of that inertia denotates divergent force in motion in a reciprocating processional hyperboloid, which, while sounding complex, is no more complex than this damn donut right here. And the negative image of that is the hyperboloid. The inverse negative image of the torus is the hyperboloid. All of this will be explained in full and much, much better detail in the fourth edition of the upcoming book on uncovering the missing secrets of magnetism. Thank you for watching. Lux Iveritas.